Uh, my name is Michael Eastham. I'm 16 years old and I go to Monero High School. Uh, I'm interested in getting my hands dirty, get out there, have fun, getting the experience and all. Yeah. Michael wants to work in a really cool job, so he's off to spend some time with the guys at Arneg New Zealand to learn about refrigeration engineering. Hey Michael. Hi. Um, hey. Nice hey. to meet you. Likewise. You could have bought some better weather with you, mate. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Matthew Darby is the owner and general manager of Arneg New Zealand and industry leader in refrigeration engineering. Um, a refrigeration engineer is a, is a multi, um, multi-discipline role really. Uh, there's there's uh, fault finding, there's uh, engineering, there's electrical work, um, plumbing, um, so it's a, it's a wide range of uh, skills are required. Matthew's brother James also works for the company. It is he who will be taking Michael out on the road. Hey James, James, this is Hi. Michael. Nice to meet hey you. Hey Michael, how you going? Good, Michael's good. going to be with us for a couple of days, so I thought he could ride with you and you can show him what we're up to and what we're about. Yeah, not a problem. Refrigeration engineers are responsible for the design, installation, servicing and maintenance of refrigeration and air conditioning systems. So James and Michael are off to do a routine check at Le Bon Cuisine. So this is a uh, core room. Where all the product store before it goes out. How cold is it in there? It's about two degrees. Jeez. So not quite as cold as the freezer room at minus oh. 20. It's cold enough. Yeah, it's cold enough. Um, it's quite important to have a good uh, understanding of maths and, and, uh, and physics, gas laws and things like that. Um, refrigeration is very much about pressures and temperatures. Um, uh, nowadays there's a lot of e electronics involved, so uh, certainly having a, a good background, a good scholastic background, like I say, maths and physics and so forth, um, and also being keen to get your hands dirty. Now, basically, now logged into the controller, um, so we can have a look and see what uh, the refrigeration plant's doing now and what it has been doing. You can see there, the compressor number four yeah. is running. Um, these are this is, uh, such a pressure, and that's our target, so that's what we're trying to achieve. Because many refrigerant substances are toxic, it's important to check for leaks. Hey Michael, this is an um, electronic leak detector. Um, yeah. One of the reasons we, obviously we don't want a leak on the system is that the refrigerant gas is bad for the environment. As well as testing for external gas leaks, it's also necessary to test for internal leaking into the refrigerant liquids. This is done by draining off a sample and sending it for chemical analysis. Gaining access to some of the refrigeration machinery can require a reasonable amount of agility and a good head for heights. Needless to say, a safety conscious attitude is vital. Okay, so this is what's called the condenser. So basically in a refrigeration system, you're trying to remove heat from a room and you need to expel it, which is what this condenser does. Certainly the industry has gone through a pretty tough time. Um, the, uh, the last 10 or 15 years with the, um, the reduction in um, new apprentices or, or young people coming into the industry has, um, has certainly uh, has given us a hard time. Hi man, um, hey. I'm Michael. I'm Brendan. Hi, um, yeah, um, do you mind if I ask you some questions? Yeah, that's cool. Uh, so, um, how long have you been in the job? Uh, for about two years now. Two years, yeah. yeah. Okay, um, what made you decide in uh, refrigeration engineering? Um, just something different, it's a bit better than building and yeah. being an electrician, I think that's just everyday thing, but refrigeration is more opportunities and yeah. go a bit higher in the trade. So. Um, once, once you're qualified, um, it's a trade that you can travel with, certainly. Um, myself and, uh, and a lot of the guys here have all uh, come out of their time and done their OEs and, and uh, travelled overseas and worked with their trade. So it's a, it's a kind of trade that um, once, you've, once you're fully qualified, um, you can really move on and, and upwards at, at your own speed if you want within the trade. Next stop, Pack and Save Henderson, the Southern Hemisphere's biggest supermarket. A large supermarket like this might have up to a million dollars worth of stock that must be kept at exactly the right temperature. If the cooling system goes down for too long, it can mean a huge financial loss. It's the refrigeration engineer's responsibility to make sure that that never happens. Some of the cooling methods used are very ingenious, and there's even one that's invisible. Right, what we've got here is um it's called an air curtain. So basically what you have is you have your cold air coming flowing out the top here, down to the bottom, going back through the bottom. You can see there's a line of moisture in the two different temperatures. Basically all that does is just keep the cold air inside the cabinet, stopping it from spilling out. It helps keep the case more efficient. 
Because the supermarket sells a huge range of items that must be kept at different temperatures, there are numerous temperature zones to be maintained. Here on the shop floor is 20 degrees. The produce area is 4 degrees. The meat section is 1 degree. And so is the dairy section. And the ice cream fridge is minus 22. James is just being faxed the results of the glycol test that was done the previous day. Hey Michael, well, as we've got here is the oil res uh, results from yesterday. You can see that throughout the test they've taken, and it's come back, the water uh, parts per million is slightly high, so yep. it's recommended that we do a dry change on that to remove that moisture. Okay. Many areas of refrigeration engineering use cutting edge technology. The system here at Pack and Save is a New Zealand first. It uses a naturally occurring refrigerant, such as carbon dioxide, to reduce the temperature of the non-toxic coolant, which is then pumped around the system. To be a successful refrigeration engineer, you need to be uh, practical, um, you need to be hands-on, um, you need to be uh, a good communicator, um, and certainly not, um, not afraid of working on your own, but also good at being in a team environment. Pretty high, eh? Yeah. Oh, oh. Shall I show you how to wash this condenser? Yep. Okay. Well, Michael wanted to get his hands dirty and he got his wish. So, what did the mentors think? Well, I've had a good chat with James um, and it sounds like they've had uh, quite an interesting couple of days um, out on roofs and uh, up in plant rooms and uh, taking oil samples and all kinds of things. And uh, according to James, everything seems to be coming up really well. So, Michael shows a lot of enthusiasm and uh, very interested to, to know more. So, um, can't ask for more than that. Um, yeah, he went well. He seems like he's keen to get in there and learn and not afraid to get his hands dirty, which is always good to see. Well, um, besides the refrigeration and stuff, I, I like the travelling part of it. Actually getting in there and using my hands, because, you know, I don't mind getting my hands dirty. And um, I don't know, actually like being up there in the, in the job doing stuff, it's just great. Right now there's a high demand for more refrigeration engineering apprentices. You can enter the job as an apprentice and complete a national certificate in refrigeration and air conditioning level 4. This normally takes 4 years and you can work and earn while you're doing it. 3 years secondary education is desirable and preferred subjects are English, Maths, the Sciences, Technology and Computer Studies. And there are ongoing industry seminars to help you upskill and go even further. To find out more contact Competence, the industry training organisation for the refrigeration and air conditioning industry.